Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. Well, we've got Mac OS Sonoma 14.0. Hoo uh, 16 gigs of RAM, gig and a half of video, two and a half gigahertz dual core i5, 2012, mid 2012 MacBook Pro. All right, so this is one of my two of the same 22, uh, 2012 MacBook Pros. This is my guinea pigger. And I thought, well, I run Ventura and the only thing that didn't work on it was Stage Manager, but that could have been because, well, OCLP still needed to do an update to their program, which they now have 1.0.1. So if you're already running OCLP, as soon as you fire up the program, it's already going to tell you it's got an update. And of course, at that point, rerun your root patches to make sure all those are all up to date as well. Anyhow, so um, I'm not going to go through on, you know, how to install all this stuff and everything. Maybe we'll do a different video on that. Um, or did I already do one? I think. I don't know. I'll check my YouTube channel. I might have already done a video for that. But if not, I shall do that for you. It appears that Stage Manager, though, may actually work this time because when I clicked on it, um, it actually gave me the little setup windows that we should see. Something we didn't get in Ventura. So we all just told y'all, folk, that, yeah, forget Stage Manager. ain't going to work. Now, I don't know anything about stage manager i haven't really looked that much into it because i really could care less about the feature but at least this time when we click on it stuff disappears and it's like oh maybe it does work now i'll look further into this because you know like i said i don't actually use it when you do click on a blank part of the screen um your screen actually changes its perimeters a little bit there and uh, i'm not sure how well you can see that but then poof you click it again and it's back uh so that's kind of cool Anyways, going into the system settings, uh, you do have live wallpapers on this that you can use, and you got to download each one, and it's like, oh, it takes a little bit. Even on M1, it still takes a little bit to download, because I guess they're pretty freaking huge. But um, anyways, nonetheless, um, we have our general tabs and storage, you know, all the usual junk here. Um, if you're wondering how to get access to your screensaver hot corners, click on desktop and dock. Scroll to the bottom and then click on hot corners and that's where you can set up whatever hot corner you want to do whatever feature that's within the list. But the big thing is here is we want to have it say start screensaver. So I have mine set for the bottom right corner, which is kind of like what I've always done in the past. So, you know, that's kind of my thing. Uh, you can start it wherever you want within the four corners. But um, either way, um, yeah, privacy, security, we have all the same stuff, right? So um, now as far as the, uh, the, the screensaver, you got screensaver, uh, which you can choose, you know, anything up here that's within the list. You can say show all 61 of them and boom, you get a whole list and you can pick through them. And each time you click on one, of course, you will have to initially download it at least once. Now, I don't want my screensaver as my wallpaper, so turn that switch off. Um, show on all spaces, I say off. For me anyways uh, when you go to wallpapers of course your wallpapers give you access as well to all the same stuff and then some right and of course you know I don't want to show this as a screensaver because this is my background right um, and then of course show on all spaces um, light dark automatic you know I kind of like the whole let's go to dark you know and uh, or it can go automatic it's kind of up to you um, it's I guess it's a texture thing with the coloration for this for the wallpaper, but whatever But all your other stuff, of course, you know, you find it in the usual spots focus screen time All that jazz Bluetooth network Wi-Fi um, This thing actually automatically set my Ethernet at the gigabit uh, Because it can go lower right and uh, So it's like well, I've got a gigabit router It knows that and it automatically had set it to auto but I did the manual setting to make sure that it was actually on gigabit, period, locked out. So this way it can't go automatic. But it was already set for that, but I just overrode the settings and just said, yeah, I just want to lock it at one gigabit. So, but anyways, and of course, Wi-Fi is also active, but I don't have it connected to a Wi-Fi network because I'm on Ethernet right now, which actually is a lot faster than Wi-Fi. Um, but then again, newer computers, 
Wi-Fi is actually faster than a lot of Ethernet, at least to a certain point anyways, okay? Um, but yeah, you have all your usual stuff. Uh, you know, in your settings here for Finder settings, you're gonna wanna click on hard disk to make sure it's active if you wanna see your hard drive or SSD on the desktop. Otherwise, it sets up as normal. You don't get to see it and it's like, where'd it go? It's not there. And it's like, yeah, well, yeah, just click on it and it'll be there. Don't worry, you'll be fine. It's okay, chill. All right, now as far as running external drives and all that goes, all this stuff works just fine. I've had no issues whatsoever uh, with any of my ports. They're all working. Um, you know, I've got three games down here, uh, Double Helix and Platinum for Soldier of Fortune and Unreal Tournament 2004, all work flawlessly. Far Cry, on the other hand, being wrapped, does not work properly. I get a cursor in the screen while I'm playing and it makes the game hard to play. But as far as how well the game actually does, it's perfect. And that's at medium settings. Uh, haven't tried it at high. But the game ran fine under Ventura, ran fine under Catalina as being a wrapped program because these are PC programs here uh, that I'm talking about that I use Paul the Tall porting toolkit and I take PC games and I wrap them so that I don't have to run Windows if I don't want to. But not all games will wrap and work properly depending on the version of OS you're on. So... It may work perfect on one OS, but then you upgrade your OS and it may not work on there. And then you upgrade it again, it may go back to working or it'll stay non-working. It kind of varies, <laughs> you know? It's just the way that particular thing works. Um, but um, in my Mac backup folder here, of course, we go into my games folder. And uh, now a lot of these games are just ones I've downloaded from the app store and I can't run them till they verify and I'm not going to sign in with an Apple ID uh, account on this computer because this is my guinea pig machine which is why I have wrapped programs because then it doesn't matter um, I still have Fallout New Vegas and Gun these are wrapped as well <coughs> I can try those out Marathon Trilogy um, I can actually run that if I want to because it has nothing to do with the app store uh, Elder Scrolls um, Skyrim five uh, special edition does not work properly under sonoma it was fine under ventura fine under catalina but not under sonoma it does not want to run one right on sonoma so that was a bit of a problem um, that i ran into with that being on this computer okay so it's kind of like well it doesn't mean it's going to work that way on every computer some computers it may run on just fine being wrapped but others probably not um, I have the other Unreal tournaments I haven't actually even tried them out yet but 2004 works fine um, so that's not an issue at all uh, I also have um, actually Grand Theft Autos I know one of these doesn't work because it wants a 1080p screen but the other one works and it actually even runs up to a 4k display uh, so I've run that and it's it's fine um, so it's gonna kind of vary with, with games. So I should actually figure out which one of these actually did work. So, but uh, I don't have GarageBand, Keynotes or any of that because obviously you need your Apple ID to sign in to re-download them. Because um, whenever you do download uh, a new OS where you're formatting the drive and reloading from scratch, you don't get Keynotes, GarageBand, iMovie, Pages, and a few others. Uh, those you just re-download from the App Store. They're free anyways to you. They're already there when you bought your computer new, but when you reload even a brand new M1 or an M2, it's the same thing. You have to re-download them. They only come once, and that's when you initially buy your computer brand new. So after that, you can just keep updating your OS, and they stay there and doesn't disturb your stuff. But if you ever want to do a fresh, clean install, that means formatting the drive. So back your stuff up. Uh, before you do that but either way you're re-downloading so anyhow um, it is running fine though the temperatures are pretty much almost about the same as Ventura maybe a degree or two difference um, but I'm kind of not sure if I want to leave this on here only because of the, the programs that no longer work with Sonoma on the uh, unsupported OS here um, they worked fine under Ventura and Catalina so it's kind of like well Ventura is not going to go extinct anytime soon anyway so 
wouldn't hurt to go backwards, but then I lose out on my really nice wallpapers, the live wallpapers, which I really, really like, and they work flawlessly. So it's kind of a, I'm in a toss up right now, and I do have to know if Stage Manager really does work or not. But it, it did give the box dialogues up to, to set it up, which that it didn't do before. But I do want to reload Ventura anyways on this uh, with 1.0.1 of OCLP just to see if Stage Manager comes back to life. And if it does, then we'll know for sure. But I'm thinking it might. It, it just might. We, we'll, we'll find out. But I want to check out these other games and see how well or not so well uh, they're going to run anyways. Um, just so I have a a collectionable idea of what games are going to work with this and what don't on Sonoma uh, on this particular Mac. So, but anyways, um, as far as the rest of it goes, I think personally, if you want to get the best experience out of Sonoma, it's a pretty chunky OS. Okay, it's pretty demanding on the, on the system. I mean, it's not that bad on the RAM, but... It is demanding on, on, on your video and your, your processor. I would probably suggest maybe use a quad-core processor Mac and something with a gig and a half, maybe two gigs of video RAM or more, and you're going to have the ultimate best experience ever. But, on, but running on this particular MacBook, it does have 16 gigs of RAM, which I definitely recommend, and I definitely recommend an SSD, okay? I mean... That's kind of a must, because otherwise you're waiting forever for it to load the OS. And even installing the OS would take you hours. I know, we made that boo-boo with my wife's 2010. I forgot that we did not upgrade her drive at the time, and it was an HDD. And oh my goodness gracious, it took hours just to get the OS in. And then to boot into the OS, and this is Monterey, that was like horrifying so we kind of took it apart and it's like, oh, something I didn't upgrade for you. Sorry, honey, let's put a real drive in here. Off to Best Buy we go. And uh, so I put an SSD in there for her and now it's great. <laughs> so makes a huge difference. But anyways, um, I think in the overall scheme of things, um, it, everything's fine. Um, one thing I just noticed though, where the heck is my trash bin? I don't see my trash bin anywhere. Oh yeah, that's, we don't have that anymore. That's, oh, my dock went in hiding. Why is my dock hiding? I didn't tell it to hide. That That's a funny one. Um, let's go to the dock here. Let's see what, where the dock setting is. Bottom screen, genie effect. Uh, minimize windows when using. Scale effect, no. Zoom. No, automatically high and show dock is turned off. There we go. I think we have a glitch. Yeah, we got a glitch. Hmm. Because the dock, if unless you set it to automatically show and hide, it's default, it stays. And it was doing its own thing. So I think we have a glitch in, in version 1.0.1. So, but, okay. So we have a glitch to, to deal with. But the live, the live wallpapers are friggin' lovely. I love these things. So, anyways, guys, I'm going to cut loose out of here. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, do give it a go. But um, keep this thing definitely away from a 2010... MacBook and probably even a 2011 because they do have very low video RAM 2012 and above is kind of like your best suited machines because you definitely at least have a gig and a half of video um, My wife's computer hers is a 2010 with like 256 megs of video. She cannot even run GarageBand or Logic iMovie she can run but yeah 256 big megabytes of video is really weak um, and she's running Monterey, so I'm thinking we might actually move her backwards to Big Sur um, Because I think Big Sur would be more suited and she might be able to run GarageBand at that point um, But that's the only real hiccup she's got with hers You know other than she can't play some of the video games I do but she does have games she can play uh, with that low RAM 
but uh, even this I wouldn't even think about trying this on a 2010 MacBook no way not with live uh, wallpapers I think you'll probably kill the machine because it, it does raise the temps like we're at 70 80 degrees here just for having that screensaver on you know for a little bit here you know like here we'll just pop it off and 80 degrees and so you do have to keep your fans up uh, so get max fan speed control set around four or five thousand rpm leave it there and it'll keep the temps under control more on ventura i did a 1080p video 5000 rpm never broke past 87 degrees so that was awesome that worked really great but anyway that's it that's all let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll definitely catch you guys on the next one see ya